Hey game developers and welcome to another Unity tutorial. I'm Bilal from Zenfinity.net and in this one we're going to be talking about cooldowns and this is actually going to be a pretty short video and in my opinion there isn't really any need for any project files. So what we're going to be doing here is just creating a basic script uh, that will only print something every time we click as long as the cooldown has elapsed, right? Um, and so this is really important for spells or guns, uh, for example, those are the two big ones. I mean, think of League of Legends, for example, uh, you hit, you know, Q, W, E, or R, and they all have their own unique cooldowns. And then if you hit them while the cooldown is up, then it'll just say the cooldown is not elapsed or whatever uh, until it has, and then you can use that spell again. Okay, so why don't we just go ahead and start with that said. Uh, you can see I'm in my velocity project here, so I'm just going to go ahead and open uh, this create dialog, and I'm going to hit uh, C sharp script here, right? Uh, we can call this cooldown, uh, I'll call it cooldown script. Uh, and I'll actually just go ahead and drag it onto the main camera. Uh, in practice, try avoid doing, try to avoid just putting things on the main camera and make an empty game object. Uh, but since this is just a quick tutorial, it doesn't really matter uh, how I do that. Okay, so opening up Visual Studio here um, by double clicking on it, and uh, we just have an empty Unity script here. So what I'll do is delete these for now so I can think about it. Um, and now we need a couple of variables here, right? So one of them is going to be the next time that we can fire. The other one is going to be the total cooldown time. Uh, and so how this is going to work is we're going to check if the time that has elapsed in Unity is, um, you know, has surpassed what the next fire time is. And the next fire time is calculated by adding onto uh, the current time a cooldown time. Right, okay, so why don't I go ahead and write, uh, we'll make these public, public int um, cooldown time, right? Um, and then we'll have a public int for, this can actually be private, private int for um, next, I guess, fire time, right? Um, so this is the next time that we can use the ability, and this is uh, obviously the cooldown time of the ability. So why don't we go ahead and do, I think I'll use an update and then check for a mouse button click here. So let's go ahead and write private void update. And here with Visual Studio, it'll autocomplete. Um, and so we're going to check if uh, input, so if input static class, well, actually class with static uh, variables here. So we want to check if we get the mouse button down, which means press. So uh, we pick zero because the zeroth index is the left mouse button. Um, so if we've hit the left mouse button, right, then what we're going to do is um, we're going to set the cooldown time. But first we're going to do, you know, what we're supposed to do at the beginning, which is cast the spell. So we'll say um, ability used cooldown started, right? Uh, so when we press it, the cooldown should start. So what should happen is next fire time should equal time dot time, which is the current time in Unity. Um, but we're going to add onto that. Oh, and I'm sorry, this should be a float. Uh, and this also, we can make a float if uh, you're not going to use an integer. But personally, I mean, yeah, you might want it to be a float because the cooldown time can be reduced, etc. But um, yeah, that's up to you. Okay, so time dot time plus cooldown time, right? Cooldown time. Okay, so the next time we can fire is the current time plus the cooldown time, right? That's how time works. Uh, we wait five seconds, that means current time plus five seconds is the next time five seconds has elapsed, right? Okay, so that sets our cooldown. Um, so now we need to make sure that this only happens if next fire time is, uh, you know, less than time dot time, right? Because that means that we passed it. So what we do here is actually um, just check if time dot time um, is greater than next fire time, right? So that means that um, we've passed next fire time. Uh, then we can do this uh, mouse button clicking here. Okay, so I'll delete these new lines here. This is pretty much all you have to do, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to do. Oh yeah, that was, uh, we'll set defaults here. So let's say the cooldown time is two. Let's say the next fire time is uh, zero to begin with, obviously, because we start with no cooldown, unless you want to start with a cooldown, uh, in which case you might want to reset it somewhere. Like when the match starts, you might say, 
uh, this ability starts at one second, or you know, if you get an ability, you might not want the player to be able to use it immediately. You might want them to wait for the cooldown. So this is working now. So why don't we go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And every time I click, it'll say cooldown started. And see, see how I'm clicking right now. You can probably hear it. And you can see this collapse going up. I'll, I'll turn off collapse to make it more clear. So obviously the cooldown cannot go through. Uh, until two seconds have passed. Okay, so that is going to be it for this tutorial. That's how to create a cooldown in Unity. Uh, if you liked it or it helped you out, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more tutorials like this, then hit subscribe. We do them every week. Um, and other than that, if you want some free resources, there's an ebook on how to create your first game, or rather the tools for creating your first game. If you want to click that in the top right, there's a little I. You can click that for the card. Uh, and now there's a sample video uh, from one of our courses that's totally free and you can check that out if you want to make 2D spaceship controls. Uh, and with that said, I will see you in the next episode and have an awesome day.